Okay, the regular council meeting, Monday, November 3rd, 2014, 7 p.m. will now come to order. Roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Here. Mr. Craybacher. Here. <laughs> Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. Thank you. All we present. Thank you, sir. Before we continue, if you have a cell phone, would you mind putting it on vibrate or turn it off, please, so it doesn't interrupt the meeting? And now we'll have the invocation by Pastor Jeff Christmas of the First Baptist Church in Nicolau. May we bow our heads in prayer. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening that you've given us to come and uh, we pray for the affairs of our city. We are thankful for the, the authorities that are over us, and we pray, Lord, that you would give them wisdom uh, to conduct their affairs. Father, we pray for our country. We're always mindful of those that stand in the gap for us, whether domestically here or overseas. We pray for our first responders as well here in this country. Thank you so much for your blessings, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. If you join me with the pledge, please, we use the flag in the back of the building. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under the God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you, Pastor. I want to thank everyone for being here this evening. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. We'd love to see more faces out there, if you would, please. I need the action on the minutes of the regular meeting, October 20th, 2014. So moved. <laughs> I try to be There's an echo in here. John, John, that's the same. John got it. Mr. Krabacher. I knew that was coming. Did I hear a second? Second. Thank you. <laughs> That was good. Any questions on the minutes? Anyone? If you call for the vote, please. Mr. Zamboff? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Fast 7 to 0. Thank you. Communications tonight? None tonight. None tonight. And we'll go into the city manager's report. Thank you very much, Mayor and Council. We'll start under its service discussion. Mr. Kiko, did you have any updates uh, this evening? Uh, just real quick. Uh, good evening, everyone. This leak pickup is ongoing. Uh, we're currently in Section C, C which is the Northwoods area. Um, this week, we're hopefully we will get it completed here in the next day or so. We've been trying to work ahead in another section at the times uh, just to try and stay ahead. And that is all I have. Any questions on that? Yes. Uh, yeah, I had, I had two questions. One on the, on the leaf pickup, if, because um, I don't have the chart in front of me, if someone's neighborhood was already done, there's a second round where they'll come through, or they also have the option of putting it behind the old school. That is correct? Yes. Both those, thank you. And then that, that's available if you go to the, the city's website, they can look up and see what neighborhood you're, you're in and when their leaf pickup is going to happen. Right. Um, and then the second one, we had, we had spoken about that. Um, I had some residents ask about spraying, the spraying of weeds and whatnot that come up around the curbs and sidewalks and the hydrants. Um, I wonder if you could touch on that a little bit, how, how we do that. Um. We drove, uh, two guys drove around on the gator with a, uh, uh, like a towable type sprayer. We sprayed for about a week and got what we could in about a week's time. Okay. Uh, which was the majority of uh, the, the main drags um, and areas like that that, uh, that, that were the worst. Some but of the worst I'm pretty places. sure we didn't get the whole city done. And then what you use is, it's not like RAID, this is an environmentally safe product right uh, they're, they're, they're a standard pesticide that you would get in any of your um, local um, gardening places tractor supply places like that okay thank you we would welcome anyone to help on that would we not as far as like homeowners if they'd like to clean in front of their properties and so forth yeah homeowners are they, they can do in front of their own properties but they cannot do anything outside of their properties due to um, we have a pesticide license as a government agency Thank you. Yes, Mr. Craver. Well, to touch on that, and I have another question after that. You mean I can't do it in front of my house where there 
where, where it's like beyond the curb? Actually, once you enter into the public right of way, there is some guidance on issuances of like pesticides. Like I said, we have trained um, individual that is licensed to spray on our behalf, and we have to have proper signage. As you can go to like Smith Park, you'll see we have signage out that we can spray at any time to let people know that we have sprayed. I don't know what the current rules would be for a private homeowner to spray outside of their private property. Um, Mm -hmm. Something we probably look at, but I mean, we, we, we are covered to spray anywhere in the right of way. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, there's another question, and it doesn't pertain to that at all. Can I ask another question? Go ahead, yeah. please. The, um, <clears throat> I had, a, I had a, a citizen ask me about water shutoffs, and they were talking about, you know, that people are still living in places where they do, do not have water. And um, is that a health issue, or is that, you know, is, is there a way that somebody can report that, or what can be done? Uh, uh, that, I guess is my question. For, do, do, yeah, do, for whatever reason, yeah. if we need to shut the water service off, they have uh, they can be off for three days, and once three days is up, we contact <coughs> Clark County Combined Health District, notify them that the water they've been without water for X amount of days, and then it's on them for enforcement, I believe. I know we don't enforce anything as far as health <coughs> for anything after three days, but the health department does. Okay, so it is a health issue because they are the automatically. Okay, that's why. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Kick. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, then under <coughs> informational in your packets was a copy of a thank you note uh, letter that I sent to the mayor. Um, I himself, he did repaint, mulch, and plant the uh, welcome to New Carlisle sign, and we greatly appreciate it there on 235, uh, close to the Howard Shopping Center. Um, a lot of hard work involved, and it uh, looks a whole lot better. We appreciate your efforts you. on the behalf of the city. Um, lastly, in your packet um, is a memo. We do this every year, looking ahead to 2015. Any of the uh, legal holidays, federal holidays, where we normally would have a council meeting. In the past, the uh, council has voted to move that meeting to the next day, the Tuesday. And I've listed the three occasions next year. It would be Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, and Labor Day. Those are the usual suspects. Um, so it would take a motion of council if you would like Mr. to Mayor. move that to Tuesday. Yes, Mr. Zambach is ready to do so. Please. I move that we uh, change the uh, meeting days to follow Mrs. Jones' memorandum, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, and Labor Day. We are meeting the Tuesday following. Second. Thank you. Mr. Collier. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Ms. Jones's memo is accepted. Pass that. Thank you very much. And that's all I had. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. I do have one question. Do we have a current list for trash pickup at this point? Or are they sending one out soon? For the recycling? <coughs> no, both. I think the one that I have that I ended in September, actually, I just realized right. that. Right. Um, they gave us a temporary <coughs> one through December, but I have already reviewed the one for next year that actually picks up in October, mm -hmm. and those are supposed to be at the printers now, and they're going to be mailed to your homes. Okay. So we don't, I have a rough draft of one if anybody's interested. I've sent it for, it's going to be updated, I believe it's already been um, updated on the website. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Okay, um, two questions, and I know Lynette's really good, and, and she <laughs> came out running and everything else, Bell Manor and Trim Creeks, and have you heard anything more? <coughs> no updates on either one. I am uh, working with the clerk's office to obtain uh, documents and pleadings on those matters if we don't receive um, a file on those from the previous law director. I don't have one to date. And I've identified who the prosecutor is um, on those matters. The Clark County uh, Court of Common Pleas is no longer online. So uh, we're making arrangements to have someone from my office collect those pleadings and I'm arranging for a meeting 
with the prosecutor uh, handling matters um, from the county to bring myself up to speed and determine what else needs to be done. Okay. Yeah, she's a good attorney. There's no pending deadlines that I have been that I have been made aware of to date, okay. um, which is the first thing that I did to make sure that we preserved any rights in the city. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions for the city manager? Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> We're now comments from uh, the members of the public. Anyone like to speak tonight? Anyone have anything to say? If you do, if you go up to the podium, please. Again, thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. He, I, I bet you he's got a lot to say. He does, but I bet his dad would rather he didn't. <laughs> Maybe another time. <laughs> all right, we will go on. Uh, committee reports, any this evening? None this evening. All right, resolutions, I see we have none. Ordinances, we do have one. If you would read that, Mr. Collier, please. Ordinance 14-50E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services, LCC. Is that LLC? Should be Mr. LLC. LLC? Mm -hmm. LLC, representing the public entity pools of Ohio for the administration of said policy in declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Motion to adopt ordinance 14-50E. Second. Did you want to talk? Or yes, I want to talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I spoke with Kim yes, today, mm -hmm. Friday. Well, I spoke with you today. Today. Mm -hmm. Friday, Lowell, the mayor brought this to my attention. We had a, a, a bit of a misunderstanding on our part when we noticed that we are insuring our city buildings for $22 million. I don't know how many of you have driven around the city lately, but we don't have quite $22 million worth of buildings. So I spoke with our representative. And there's two classifications, basically, of property that they're using outside of vehicles. One is personal property. This would be an example of it. Chairs, desks, computers. Everything else is a building. Uh, the water tower uh, on Scarf Road, that is a building. Uh, the lift station, which lifts the sludge to the sewer plant, that is a building, even though you may not believe it. All the fire plugs we got in town are buildings. So basically there are two classifications of property, personal property and buildings. This policy also covers our property, be it personal property or the building, not at what we have invested in it, not necessarily what it would be worth on the open market to sell, but we are covered for the amount of money it would take to put it back as is. That's called replacement cost. And if we lost the fire department, for example, due to an explosion, we would not have the luxury of messing around and getting various and sundry buildings. We'd have to find a contractor that could come in now, put that building back. We'd have to find the equipment that's in that building right now. Who's got it that we can buy? So we wouldn't have the opportunity to shop for price with replacement costs. We don't need to. They've already taken that into consideration. A fire suit costs X amount of dollars. We got X number of fire suits. That's what we got. <clears throat> we got blanket property coverage, personal property coverage, all by blanket. It means they figure out what the total value of all personal property is in the building. And they say, okay, that's what everything in this building is insured for. They don't say, this table for 200 bucks, that chair for 50. You got 
six hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff in that building, and here all of it goes. We're going to replace it up to a maximum of six hundred thousand dollars. And again, the building they have a special formula. Uh, it's Marshall and Swift. It's a computer program. We used it when we had our business. It simply includes all the pertinent factors: year of construction, type of construction, uh, location, how close you are to a fire hydrant, size of the building, type of roof, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You put all these factors in the computer program says, okay, to build another one of those is going to cost you six hundred thousand dollars. And that's fine. Generally speaking, our experience was when we applaud when we did evaluation, they tended to be generous. You might say, well, yeah, that's just the insurance company's way of ripping you off for another buck or two bucks. No, it's not. It's a way that there's going to be the money there to replace what you lost. And trust me, if, if your building is really worth only 500000 to replace it, and you've got it insured for $525,000, you're paying pennies, just pennies difference once you've established the base. So we are not getting ripped off, in my opinion. There were some other issues I had which are really not germane at this point. Uh, I do know that we got this huge statement of values here, which we didn't have originally we counseled last week, which is part of the reason there were some questions. Uh, this is done through the Public Entities Pool of Ohio. This is not an insurance company as is State Farm, Allstate, something of that nature. This is really like a, well, it's a pool. We're it. We're not completely It functions as an insurance company. There are not financial issues to be involved here. The big difference is there's a lot fewer fingers in that pot taking a profit each step along the way. When I sold, when we had our agency, anytime we saw somebody in the public entities pool, we didn't, we couldn't even get a company to quote it because they knew they couldn't remotely come up with a price like that. Based upon that past experience, I got no problems with that. I know the inventory, Kim and our agent worked for many, many hours, nice. making sure that it's an adequate inventory and we didn't overlook something real obvious. That's another reason you get blanket coverage. You will overlook something. It's, it's impossible not to, especially with as much as we got. So we're in good shape there. The uh, one of the things that our agent told me when I was on the phone with her, this is due, we, we got it as an emergency ordinance. We have to, re, the policy renews November 1st, which was two days ago. So we got to do it now. It's not optional financially. And please, don't worry about this little detail. The policy, in my opinion, is quite, quite good. When the actual physical policy gets delivered to us at the end of November or early in December, I'm going to be present at that meeting. Uh, it was offered by the lady that's our agent. She said, would you like to be included? And I said, I'd love to. So I'll have an opportunity to go into the policy in, in greater detail. I really don't have any problems with the numbers they came up with. They've spent a lot of time getting them. I have absolutely no problem with the carrier, and I have no problem with the premium. So as far as we're concerned, that's the three main things. Valuation of property, carrier, and premium. I'm happy with all that. If we end up with a slightly different valuation at any point during the year, and it'd be foolish to spend the amount of time and effort it'd take to come up and save Fifty or hundred thousand dollars off the valuation for the small amount of money we'd save. But at any rate, if we come up with something different, we can change it. We have under contract sixty days to notify the carrier that we do not intend to renew. Unfortunately, that sixty days starts prior. To the November 1st 
renewal date. So we have to tell them two months ago <coughs> that we don't want it. And this package was presented to Kim on October the 20th. Now, if you don't have the information necessary to make your decision until October the 20th, and you got to notify them September the 1st that you're not interested, we've got an issue here. I'll have her clear that up for me. The other thing she says, it's 100% earned premium. According to what she told me, we are by contract obligated right now to renew this because we didn't notify them 60 days ago we were not going to. Number two, once we've paid the $72,179 premium, if we get mad at them and turn around tomorrow and cancel it, they keep the $72,179. So whether we approve this tonight as council or don't, according to what the agent told me, we still got to write the check for $72,179. So in my opinion, if we're going to pay the premium, we sure better get the insurance. Mrs. Jones, I'm through talking. Thank you. I just wanted to point out that top sheet on your packet that I gave you this evening was actually the summary from last year. I wanted you to see the comparison of the rate. The 72,179 is what we paid last year. It's actually about $700 higher this year, 72,876. So I thought that was a relatively small increase from last year to this year for the coverage. I wanted to thank Mr. Zamblock for clearing that up for us. And, uh, thank you. You're doing well. your research on that? Yes, sir. I as well thank Mr. Sandbach, but I got a question for the law director. Is it legal for them to say, okay, here it is, you've got 10 days to make up your mind, we haven't sent you all the information? Is that, that doesn't sound right. Does it, does it sound appropriate? Exactly. I have not reviewed the contract terms, okay. um, but it doesn't, it sounds like it's something that um, one of your councilmen are going to follow up on. I'd be happy to assist. Um, under 2744, the revised code, um, in addition to uh, get the bang for your buck, if, you have, if you're in a position where you're writing a check, um, of course, we all know that the city is uh, responsible to ensure, indemnify, and defend any of its employees um, for anything that they would do in the course and scope should liability their liability at any point in time be questioned by anyone and part of being a member of a pool is to provide insurance and defense for any of those type situations uh, that may occur so it would certainly be prudent to not um, have a lapse in coverage right and i agree with that but what i guess maybe i didn't stand right if they give you 60 days but they don't present the information for you until 10 days before I mean, how can they make you stick with the six, you know, yeah. with that? If I, you haven't had the proper amount of time to look at the information, is yeah. my thing. And maybe I, that's something they can look into. I have a response to that. Okay. I believe what the agent said was we must notify them of our intent. Intent, okay. To shop. That does not mean. Right. And I'm not sure exactly what that means. I, it sounds like we got to take it, and no, we don't. Right. But we never told, we never notified them of any intent right. as far as non-renewal or potential non-renewal is concerned. We'll find out the policy yeah, delivery because it'll be in there. And there's a couple of questions I want to ask her. I might have misunderstood. I, I rarely do, but this could have been one of those. <clears throat> Once again, thank you, Mr. Zambach. Appreciate it. Mr. Reynolds has a question. Uh, how long is this contract, and do we have one? Because in the note here, it says this coverage. This is a su coverage summary and not a legal contract. So when, how long does this contract last? Um, it says that on page 14 in the notes. November 1 to November 1 is the contract. Is the contract? Yeah, well, uh, November 1 through October 31st. Of the following year. It's a year, yeah. Oh, you year. year. All right. And then do we have the contract at all on file, or have they not just given us one? That's what he's going to bring. That's what she's going to bring right. to us when uh, Mr. Zambach plans oh. to be there. Uh, that's what I was asking, is like we're going to approve something without a contract. 
without knowing fully what's in it. This is, this is standard in the industry. It's not unlike calling to secure insurance for your automobile coverage. Yeah. Do you want UM? Do you want UIM? Uh, do you want med pay? And then the actual um, document is sent to you at some point after outlining what all those coverages are. I looked through the coverage summary and it is um, standard um, and provides some additional coverages that I typically don't see. So there's nothing um, to, uh, of concern to me with regard to the coverage package that is being proposed by PEP, and PEP is a very reputable company. So it's a standard practice then, like for municipalities across the state of Ohio, to get these packets and then not the contract and they approve. Is yes, the, the contract is always sent afterwards. All right, thank you, Mr. Backer. Um, something I wanted to bring up. This was a an issue I had when we were looking at the price of this was the cost of buildings because is the bulk of, of um, what the, the high rate was was due to the buildings but I'd like to point out their definition of building is different from the one that you and I would use. What we're in right now is a building where the city has our offices as a building. They're also including fire hydrants, the street lights, um, see we have the, the, the bike racks and benches, a flagpole, those fall under their classification. So um, when you're going through this, keep that in mind that they, they run by a different set of definitions that the rest of the free world does. And that's how they get their numbers there. But um, is this, this is available for people to look at if this were, this were passed today? We'd, we'd have this at the city building or is that not? No, it's, yeah, it's available. It's on the bulletin board. Okay. For the public so I encourage everyone to go and take a look at this. I um, mean, if you have any questions, um, I'm sure Mr. Zambach would love to, he, he knows more about it. Um, I think I do has a better understanding of the situation as he dealt with insurance as a career and also our mayor as well. And so we'd love to uh, answer any questions you may have about this. Anyone else? Any other comments? Anyone? Just a quick question. Yes. Um, the deductibles is all $500. You know, if we raise the deductibles, you know, would that lower the cost nationally? That'll be a question I will ask. Okay, thank you. I have one more question, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, please. So, like, if we do increase our deductible, would we be able to renegotiate the contract for this coming, oh, for this year? It, it's a matter of form. Uh, how much would it cost if we raised the deductible to $1,000? Well, that would take your premium down to 70000 for example. I mean, I have no idea what the numbers are, but that might be what you'd say. Then we have to make a decision. Is it worth us to us to take our deductible on each and every piece down to 500 each and save two grand? Or are we going to say, well, geez, let's save two grand if we lose a building or two. We've got money. Maybe she'll say, hey, we're going to save you 100 bucks a year. $500 deductible is wonderful. But they will adjust it immediately upon our making that decision. For the balance of the policy year. So if we would do that January 1st, it would be 10 12 or 5 6 of a year's premium savings that we get immediately. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Any other questions? Anyone? Mr. Collier, would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Reynolds? Yes, because we have to, uh, we're going to pay either way we go. So. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. And again, Mr. Zambach, thanks for doing your due, due diligence on that and explaining things that people hopefully would understand. That's good. This, yeah, this is good coverage at a good rate. It right. truly is. We were never competitive against this rate. Thank you. All right, we're ready for other business now. Other business, anyone like to say anything? I just wanted to thank you again for the job you did on the sign. It looks wonderful. Thank you. But if you could it. maybe stop by and wash that smell out of the back of my truck from hauling manure for you. There was manure in your truck? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> but no, thank you. Very good job. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anyone else? Anything? Okay, uh, would you like to go ahead and read 
Sure. A through D, I guess it would be, sure. please, if you would. City offices will be closed uh, Tuesday, November the 11th for Veterans Day. They will also be closed on Thursday, November 27th and Friday, November 28th for Thanksgiving. There will be a joint government meeting Monday, January 26, 2015 at 6.30 at the Bethel, Bethel Township Firehouse. The New Carlisle Crime Watch meeting will be uh, Wednesday, November 12th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. And uh, Election Day is tomorrow, Tuesday, November the 4th. Uh, and remember, the city income tax issue is on the ballot. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate that. Council, anyone like to say anything about voting? Yes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, You've heard all the why fours and why nots and who you should and who you shouldn't. Uh, so I will not get into that, but I would encourage everyone to vote tomorrow. It is your right as a United States citizen, and I encourage you to go and vote. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah. Briefly, I encourage everyone to vote for the city income tax. But straight, safe streets, that doesn't mean bigger curbs. That means we can still afford to keep cops out of Anyone else? Any other? Staff, anyone like to say anything? One more time out in the audience. Anyone like to say anything this evening? Executive session, there's none tonight. So I would entertain. Mr. Mayor. Yes. All right, we'll be adjourned. We are. We are adjourned.